Welcome back to Start and After Effects. If you're just joining the series here, this video isn't really going to require previous knowledge of the other videos. I'm trying to make sure anyone who's learning After Effects can jump in at any point. There's a good chance you know some of the stuff I'm covering already. And this isn't an accredited course, there's no test at the end. When I first opened After Effects way too many years ago to think about, I struggled. Mainly because I was used to using Adobe Premiere. As I've mentioned before with After Effects, it's closer to Photoshop with time. So any Photoshoppers out there, you're going to hear about a lot of stuff you already know in this video. Transfer modes allow you to stack layers of video on top of each other and blend them together without needing to chroma key or mask out edges. Here's stock footage of an explosion. It's got a black background. Due to its organic soft edges, I'd never be able to successfully cut the fireball out from the black background. But thanks to transfer modes, I don't have to. Let's take a look at how that works. Here I am in After Effects, and I've got this great picture of Earth taken from the ISS. Incidentally, almost all the pictures I'll be using in this series and included in the downloads have come from Pixabay, which is a fantastic free, royalty-free image source. Now, I'm going to add an explosion. It's stock footage and royalty free, but under the terms of use from where I got it from, I'm not allowed to distribute it. However, if you search for free explosion stock footage, you can find lots of websites willing to offer shots like this for free, if you sign up your details. Alternatively, you can pay for shots. Do not, please, do not try to film your own unless you have a pyrotechnics license. Otherwise, that's just arson. So here's my explosion and adding it to the composition, I can now move it to this section of the timeline. If you can't see this section, click the toggle switches and modes button at the very bottom of the timeline. We want to see the column with mode displayed and a drop down. Now, experience will determine which transfer modes you use based on your preference. Some are more useful than others. For now, I'm going to talk about three, maybe five, no, six. First up for this shot is Add. Add adds the colour values of the layers to the layer beneath. Add gives us a very brilliant strong light. If I move the explosion around the composition you should be able to see how it changes. See, the darker the image underneath, the more detail is visible. The lighter the image, the brighter the result. Screen is a good compromise for adding explosions, fire and so on. According to the Adobe website, screen multiplies the colour values of the complementary colours, then takes the complementary result. Yeah, seems confusing to me too. What screen really does is give you a less intense add. Multiply is like the opposite of screen. Multiply multiplies the colour values, then divides that value by the maximum value of the bitrate of the comp. Yeah, makes no sense to me either. What Multiply really does is remove the lighter bits of a layer and leave the dark bits, so it's a great way to overlay maps or newspapers. Overlay, Soft Light and Hard Light are the modes I've been using most often recently. They create interesting looks, especially when adding colour washes. Colour Burn is a useful mode for when you want to create scorch marks. Although remember, if someone walks into that area, like here, the layer still applies above the action. So the scorch marks are transferred to the character too. You can get away with it once it's on her black shorts, but when the black layer is above her legs, then suddenly she's more tanned. And notice how when the black is over the white part of her outfit, there's no change. Just jumping back to our Earth view, there's one other thing worth pointing out. We have our explosion, but there's nothing exploding. Let's add in a satellite image. Now this picture has a black background, but I can't use a transfer mode to show it because these modes apply to all parts of an image. The best option here is to cut out the satellite using a mask, which we covered last video. All the transfer modes are useful and well worth exploring, but there's one last element worth mentioning. I'm talking about this Preserve Transparency checkbox. 
and what this does is retain the alpha channels of any layers underneath a layer with this checked. And here I have Stan written out using the text tool. And if I now add a cloud image over the top and click preserve transparency, I can instantly get a neat cutout. There are a couple of other ways of doing this and I'll be looking at those in other videos. Where preserve transparency is useful is that I can then add a second image, like an old map image, and multiply that and then use preserve transparency as well. Where this method falls down though, is that if I want to have something in the background, at that point I'd need to use either track mats or pre-comps or both. And to learn about those features, you'll have to wait until later in the series.